So this, this video is about the left and right end behavior of polynomials and, and the graphs of them. So what I want to show you is what they look like. So with an x squared, this is our basic graph. And with an x cubed, it looks like this, which we already knew. But what about a degree 4? And so what it does is it kind of flattens out and then goes up, flattens out and goes up. And I'll explain that in a minute. And then degree 5 does the same thing. It kind of flattens and then goes up through 1 flattens out and then goes through negative one like that. So you can already see that with an even exponent, the end behavior we're looking at is what happens at the ends of the graph. So they're both going up. And with uh, an x cubed, it's going down and up. So what we're looking at is this. This is the end behavior that you're looking at. What happens to the graph with that behavior? So you can already see when it's even, it has a certain look. And when it's odd, it has a certain look. Now, when you make it negative, what it does is makes everything go negative, just like this. So if it's an even exponent, it does this. And if it's an odd exponent, then it would actually look like this. What's happening is the negatives would turn positive, and the positives would turn negative. So it does this. And then these are all of our end behaviors. So let's look at Desmos, and you can see this as I move the little slider. So right now we have a square. Now it's a cube. You can see that shape? It's a power of four. And you can see it flattened out because what's happening, these are fractions. So if you think about a half, a half to the power of four is one over two to the power of four. So that's one over two to the power of four. Two to the power of four is 16, so that's one sixteenth. Where normally it'd be one over two squared. So that's why you can see if you look at the parabola, it goes up a lot quicker, a lot quicker through one through zero to one than this because these fractions are now getting smaller. So what's happening is everything between negative one and one is getting smaller as you increase the exponent and everything outside of that is getting larger a lot quicker. And so watch, you'll see it start to pancake as it gets quicker and quicker. So as I go through the entire graph, you can see it gets flatter and flatter and flatter the larger the exponent right in here. All right, but we're just looking at in behavior. So again, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even. They all have the same in behavior, and if you make it negative, then it's even, odd, see? Odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, and so on. So you know what the outside behavior will look at for the graph based on the degree of the exponent and the sign in front, your a. And so if it's even, we know it's going to be this. If it's negative even, it would look like this. So it's just a reflection about the x-axis. So if it's odd, it would go negative, positive. And if it was negative with an odd, it would go positive, negative. So you know what it looks like. So what would the end behavior be for this? And so we're just focusing on the leading term. The largest one will define the end behavior because as you start getting larger and larger through these problems, the square is going to take off. Think about it this way. You see someone who has a million dollars, this this guy. This guy has two million. If I were to plug in a million, this person has two million dollars. This one has a million squared. So that is six zeros, right? Times another six zeros. That's 12 zeros. This person is a million times, well, almost a million times, almost a million times richer than this person. This is like Bill Gates and us. So to us, $1,000 is a lot. To Bill Gates, it's not. So this one's going to grow insanely fast. So after, as you get go out to the infinity, it's going to look like whatever the end behavior is for that exponent. So the leading term on this one is 6 with a negative, which means it's going to look like this if you graph it. So here we go. You can see it goes down and down, and no matter how much I scroll off, that is scroll up. That's the end behavior. It does other stuff in the middle now by adding this stuff. But as long as this is the leading term, it's the largest one, it will always be way bigger by a multiple of whatever that number is. So think about it. As we get closer and closer to like billions and millions, this one will always be one extra billion more at least than the next one. So even if I did a degree five, you can still see it's that end behavior. And if I made this right here, just plain old three, you can see it's still that same in behavior. If I change this to a seven, 
now it makes that odd in behavior. See, now it's the negative odd 7. And if I change that to a positive, see, there it is again. These little guys are so tiny. They're like us compared to Bill Gates. We don't affect it. We don't have, he has billions more than us. So if I kept scrolling up, this will come back down and then go back up. But it has that odd behavior. So it's whatever the biggest one is. He's the rich guy that's going to make everything that's just a lot larger than us. And these just kind of fall off to the end because this one's so much stronger than these two. So it's always a leading term that will tell you what the polynomial looks like. So if we have a degree three, we already know it's going to look like this. All you have to do is look at the leading term. <clears throat> so the next one, what will happen is these graphs, they will put them in different order, descending order. And so you have to find the leading term like this. So it's a degree seven, which means it does the same thing as the, the odd will. So if I were to graph this function, the end behavior starting from negative infinity and the one going off to infinity will look like this. Our graph will do this and then stuff in the middle and then up like that. Okay. So we can actually do limits now. All you have to do is look at the leading term. The leading term and its end behavior will tell us what's going on. So with an x to the 8, we know our end behavior looks like this. So this is as x approaches infinity. And this one is as x approaches negative infinity. So I like to write it backwards to kind of get the idea of what is going. It's approaching negative infinity like that. So as this, this x approaches infinity, we're going to be plugging numbers into this function, and we're trying to decide the limit. So as this approaches, in, as x approaches infinity, what does our function itself approach? What number? And we already know the end behavior does this. So as x approaches infinity, we know our function is going to go off to infinity, because that's what that arrow means. That means infinity right up there. And the same thing with the negative. As x approaches negative infinity, we're going to go off to infinity as well. So just looking at the end behavior, it tells us what it is. So what's the end behavior of an odd? Well, we know it looks like this and like this. So as x approaches infinity, our function will go off to negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, our function will go off to positive infinity. See? So as x approaches infinity, we're getting this downward behavior. Our function, our y values, this thing, will go down to negative infinity. And you can already see that just by plugging it in. All we care about is the leading term. So if you just look at it this way, if I were to plug in infinity, the infinity here is positive. The odd is going to keep it positive, And so you end up with negative infinity. And if I did this, because that's all that matters is that one. That negative infinity would stay negative because it's an odd, and that negative would then turn it into negative infinity. It works the same over here. What does an even do to any number in front? It turns it positive, so we're going to end up with that. So this is how you use end behavior with limits. So all you have to do is think about this situation right here and make some little arm movements. So think about it. That is your little head right there, and you're doing this with your hands. Your hands are arrows. All right, and then that would be your shape if it's negative even, and that's your shape, and then that's your shape. So you are the polynomial with your arms. Put some feet on you. There. You are the polynomial, your arms, and so that's your even. It's your negative even because you're down, and then you're odd because odd people do this. And then that's a negative odd because he's backwards from the normal odd. All right. Thank you.